Hey everyone, William here, and now I'm going to talk to you about American Ninja Warrior Ninja vs. Ninja Wildcard 1 of 2. Uh, before we talk about the actual matches and, and all that, I need to uh, address a few things. I need to apologize for something. So basically, when this started, I thought that uh, the wild cards would be three episodes long, involve 12 teams, and would be done uh, in a similar fashion. Um, basically, uh, there was uh, a bit of a miscommunication <laughs> between me and uh, a person involved with the show. Um, I'm going to take responsibility for that. That was, that was my fault. Um, I, I feel like I misunderstood what was uh, going on uh, with the format. I think part of that was because I didn't think they would actually <laughs> do the wild cards in this fashion. So... Um, I apologize to anyone, but basically what they're doing is they took 14 teams. Basically, they took nine teams who uh, made it to the second round of their episode but lost, as well as uh, five teams who lost in the first round, and uh, they put up up in head-to-head -head, uh, competitions. But the catch is, all they have to do is win one matchup, and they move on to the top 16. Um... Which is kind of weird, because that basically means that in the span of two episodes, um, they're filling seven spots, when it originally took nine episodes to fill out the first nine. So, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, but um, I think I think their choices of wild cards uh, were good. Obviously, the nine who made it to episode two, uh, the second round are all obvious. Um, all the teams that lost uh, three to two in the first round were picked, uh, and then the ones that I lost 3-1, uh, to one, uh, there were a few of those, and I think they made the right picks. So I'm overall I'm happy with, uh, with which teams got in, but let's start with wildcard matchup number one. Lizard King versus Midwest Muscle. So it started off with uh, Hunter Gerard versus Tyler Yamaguchi. I should mention that uh, two things I want to mention also. Uh, there's a new intro, finally. The narrator has a new intro for uh, the wild card episodes. And uh, the new obstacles for this sh uh, the two wild card episodes are the ring swing and the bungee pipeline. Um, I've never been the biggest fan of the ring swing. Uh, that's just my personal preference. Uh, bungee pipeline, I like. I'm not 100% a, a fan of uh, there only being one pipe. I, I understand that, like, you know... You can wrestle around it, but, um, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fans of, like, this single-lane obstacle stuff that they do in Ninja vs. Ninja, personally. But, Hunter Garrard vs. Tyler Yamauchi. Um, basically, Tyler was able to get a lead on the bungees, but he missed on the warped wall. And Hunter was able to take advantage of the situation and score a point for his team. Lizard Kings go up one nothing. For the women, um, Sarah Schobeck ended up going uh, down early on uh, the ring swing. Christy Pratt uh, ended up taking the point for Midwest Muscle, tied up one to one. And then um, Kyle Soderman versus Ethan Swanson. Kyle was able to get uh, a little bit of an early lead on the ring swing. Ethan fought him on the pipe of the bungee pipes, but in the end, Kyle still finished first. 2-1 to one in favor of the Lizard Kings heading into the relays. So, first relay. Christy was able to get a lead early on, but um, Hunter turned things around. Uh, Tyler slipped on the tiles, got wet. But Kyle finished first. Ethan tried, but couldn't catch up. So, Lizard Kings win 3-1. They are moving on to the playoffs. Um, the other thing that's kind of weird about uh, the wild card round is that, unfortunately, uh, there's no extended course for these two episodes. It's all this six episode, six six obstacle courses. So, eh, it could be better. Anyway, match number two: All American Ninjas versus Team Frostbite. Um, Paul Ham versus Jackson Meyer start things off. Um, a bit of a surprise. Uh, Paul Ham uh, had difficulty with the ring swing, and he uh, just lost too much time. And Jackson Meyer finished, so that's a point for Frostbite. Uh, women's now April Steiner Bennett versus Zanique Levette. Um, Zanique 
uh, was able to get a lead, but um, unfortunately she got wet on the dismount of the pipes and um, that allowed April to finish first um, as Zanique could only look on as she uh, failed to get up the warped wall herself uh, when she was in the lead. So we tie things up. Um, I feel like, I have, and it's weird, I felt like there was like some editing, maybe some extra attempts were attempted that were taken out. I can't prove it, but it's just like, there was a weird edit. So April ties things up for the two teams. So uh, for the All-American ninja, uh, Ninjas, um, it was brought up that, <coughs> that uh, Jonathan Horton um, had to sit this one out uh, for injury concerns. And so Rico Rivera... Uh, who is a person I feel like doesn't get enough credit on the sh on Ninja in general, just American Ninja Warrior. Uh, he is the one who competed in a T-Rex uh, outfit. He's done it a few times uh, in different sh uh, courses. Uh, he had to go up against uh, Nick Hansen. Um, unfortunately, uh, Rico uh, wiped out on the tiles, uh, so Nick got the point for Frostbite. They took the lead 2-1. Um, basically... Uh, all you need to know about the relay is that um, uh, is that Jackson Meyer was able to get a lead on the um, on the tie on the uh, the ring swing uh, over Paul Ham, and uh, that allowed Frostbite to finish first. So Frostbite is moving on to the top sixteen, and then the final matchup for the wild card was Dark Horse versus NorCal Ninja. This one, so I was able to predict, uh, correctly predict uh, the first two, what I felt like were, were pretty easy picks, especially because Lizard Kings wasn't in my top three, so I kind of have to pick, had to pick them. Um, this one was tough to pick. I wasn't sure who was going to win uh, this one, but I went with NorCal Ninjas heading into the match. Um, so first matchup, Carson Voiles versus David Campbell. Um, they both went down on the floating tiles, basically together at the same time. They, they pretty much crashed into uh, each other on the way down. And I think uh, I'm kind of, the, the more I watch, the more I kind of question whether or not having the floating tiles is really such a, uh, a good idea for both safety and just usability. Um, we'll I'll discuss more in a, in a later episode, in a later discussion, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm starting to cool off on the uh, floating tiles, even more <laughs> than in the past. Um, but basically, Carson was technically uh, got to the tiles first, so uh, he got the point for Dark Horse. Um, and then they fast forward the women. Uh, Tam McClure was able to clear the bungees, and a shoemaker was not able to clear the bungees. So uh, Dark Horse goes up to nothing, which means Brian Kretsch has to. Uh, win this for uh, his team uh, against Lance Picus. Surprisingly, uh, Lance uh, went down the tiles. This gave Brian an easy win because he cleared the tiles and kept NorCal Ninjas alive, but still down by two. Uh, sorry, still down by one and with uh, just two matches left. Um, so for the relays, uh, basically... Uh, Carson Voiles missed the ring on the ring swing. This gave uh, Brian uh, the lead. He was able to, to essentially come through for his team. Pretty much, kind of a kind of a big MVP uh, Brian was uh, for this matchup, uh, keeping his team alive. That they gained the lead on this relay. This allowed David Campbell to finish and uh, tie things up two to two. So the final relay, um, Anna had a bit of a difficulty tagging Brian. She, like, she missed and then had to go back and get the tag again. Um, Brian was able to keep things competitive, and then David was... Uh, he essentially wrestled around uh, Lance on the bungees. Basically, um, David made sure he grabbed high on the bungees, which is uh, makes it easier to climb across. Uh, Lance was already, like... He was essentially able to wrestle around uh, Lance from the bungees to the pipe and finish first. So in a surprising come-from-behind victory, NorCal Ninjas was able to grab success from the jaws of defeat 
and they are moving on to the Sweet 16 and defeated the Dark Horse. Uh, much a surprise to everyone, I think, um, with just how that turned out. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think it was a, a good set of episodes. I think that that last match, just the way it finished with, with David Campbell kind of just, uh, and, and Brian Kretsch, kind of pulling it out of their hat, um, you know, and pulling through when, when the team really needed it the most. Uh, a lot of good stuff. And now we're going to have a second wild card to talk about. So, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time for more wildcard discussion of American Ninja Warrior Ninja vs. Ninja.